Hello and welcome to the Business Standard Morning Show. Wish you a very happy new year. I'm Vinu Sandhu. It's the 1st of January 2024 and here are the questions we will be answering today. How do Indian CEOs see 2024 playing out? What will be the key events to look forward to in 2024? Which key events will shape the markets in 2024? And what is Operation Prosperity Guardian? India Inc. showed remarkable resilience in 2023 despite global and domestic headwinds. Its net profit share in GDP is just shy of 5% now. As we welcome the new year, what do Indian CEOs think 2024 will be like for corporations? In this report, Kasturi Akhil outlines the results of a business standard poll conducted for CEOs on their 2024 outlook. As India enters the election season following the new year, India Inc. eyes a promising 2024 driven by upbeat corporate earnings, higher consumer spending and robust foreign direct investment. A dipstick survey conducted by Business Standard among chief executive officers across the country last month revealed that Indian companies are prepared to hire and invest more in the coming year. The optimism is driven by a healthy growth outlook for the Indian economy in 2024. The Business Standard poll of 22 CEOs shows that 95% of business leaders see FDI inflows on the upside, despite inflation and interest rate uncertainty. As foreign companies increase their presence in the country, coupled with the growing ease of doing business, besides foreign investments, nearly 64% CEOs also expect rural demand to revive this year. From a business perspective, Almost 91% of the respondents rated the Modi government's 9.5-year-long performance as excellent. A CEO of one of the largest financial technology companies, who did not wish to be quoted, attributed his rating to the elevation of India's overall perception on the global stage and the rolling out of multiple free trade agreements that have helped boost the country's exports. Respondents commended the Indian government and the Reserve Bank of India's efforts in taming inflation, with 100% of the CEOs seconding the notion. More than 50% of the respondents do not see the possibility of the opposition alliance India undermining prospects of the ruling government to come back to power in the new year. In fact, the CEOs were already prepared with their post-election wish list asking the government to keep up with the momentum of creating world-class infrastructure. However, Rohit Arora of Biz2 Credit, a digital lending platform, expects more flexible reforms for the financial sector in the year ahead. I think once the government gets elected, and hopefully mm, it's the same government with the majority, you know, I think India still needs big bank reforms in the financial sector, which I think RBI is trying to do, but I think there is, uh, but they're trying to do it with a lot of regulations while it needs a lot more reforms and openness and ability for, you know, large foreign entities to come in and invest and also create better corporate governance. You know. A CEO of a large steel firm emphasized the post-election budget should reiterate the theme of infrastructure capex in consonance with the fiscal consolidation target. In the Union Budget 2023, the government had announced a record spending of 10 trillion rupees, accounting for 3.3% of the GDP for infrastructure development, the highest in past four fiscal years. Many CEOs also expect the government to do more for creating employment opportunities. A CEO of a large South Indian firm expressed concerns saying the current government could have done better in generating employment and there is a need to channelize the country's growing employable community. However, nearly 73% of the CEOs surveyed said they plan to hire more in 2024. 86% of them said the annual hikes for their employees will be less than 
propelled by higher corporate earnings, close to 64% of the respondents expect their company's earnings to grow over 20% in the new year. However, Rohit Arora of Biz2x says a 20% growth in corporate earnings is a tough ask. While the corporate CEOs are very optimistic about earnings growth, you know, still most of the spending in the Indian economy is being driven by the government, you know, on the infrastructure spending and the other core sectors. So private sector still hasn't really, you know, started putting out money for uh, more greenfield projects. So while the companies which are catering to the government-led uh, projects are going to see a decent amount of growth, I don't foresee that how can a company's earning grow by 20% if the core investment by private sector is not taking off. You know, so that's a challenge even today. Speaking of healthy corporate earnings, market sentiment for 2024 seems upbeat on the back of stabilizing rupee, increased foreign portfolio investments into the Indian debt market after the inclusion of Indian sovereign bond to the JP Morgan index. About 68% of the CEOs expect the rupee to stabilize between 83 to 85 to a dollar band. A favorable combination of sound macroeconomic factors including the possibility of rate cuts by global central banks, is expected to propel the stock market upward. The outlook for India Inc. in 2024 appears promising. For now, current expectations hinge on the outcome of the upcoming election and how will that play out for Indian corporations will be revealed in due time. Industry leaders are clearly upbeat about the Indian economy and just like us, they are also eagerly waiting to know the outcome of the upcoming general election. But before that, just a few days from now, the country will witness the inauguration of a grand Ram temple in Ayodhya. So what are the other important events that may shape 2024? Ayush Mishra offers a peek. Four years after the Supreme Court verdict, construction of Ram Temple is almost complete. The consecration ceremony, which will go on for next seven days, will begin on 16th of January and on the last day, on 22nd of January, a 51-inch idol of Ram Lala representing child Ram will be installed in the new temple with Prime Minister Narendra Modi and who's who of politics and business in attendance. Larson and Tubro, which has been entrusted with the task to build this mega temple with a budget of 18,000 crore rupees, has delivered the project almost in time. And it is being complemented with an airport, a newly built railway station and a bus terminal worth 400 crore rupees. The city of Ayodhya, which has been stuck in a time warp, is in the midst of a massive facelift. The prices of land and property have jumped fourfold since the apex court's verdict. The Ayodhya Development Authority anticipates 7,000 guests for the inauguration and a daily influx of 3 to 5 lakh visitors afterwards. The escalating tourism has attracted major hotel chains with 73 new hotels in the pipeline and 40 under construction. Radisson, the first international brand, is set to open an 80-room property with bookings available from January 1st. Indian Hotels, which manages the Taj Hotels chain, is also constructing two hotels in Ayodhya. The house of Abhinandan Lodha also plans a 25-acre residential plotted development project in Ayodhya. Clearly, the temple will also bring jobs in the underdeveloped eastern UP region. And it's the moment BJP has been waiting for since its formation. The movement for constructing a Ram Mandir uh, was launched by the Bharatiya Janata Party. Uh, we have seen uh, how uh, the elections and the electoral campaigns have uh, moved around uh, the building of a temple for 
uh, Ram at Ayodhya. Now, when this temple is built, uh, it will mean a fulfillment of an electoral promise. Many experts believe that the ruling party would reap electoral benefits of Ram Temple in the general elections, which will be held just a few months later, somewhere between April and May 2024. The temple inauguration has also put the leaders of opposition parties, which have formed an alliance called India, in a fix. Barring CPM chief Sitaram Yechuri, no other leader has denied the invitation. Congress's Shashi Tharoor, meanwhile, summed up the opposition's dilemma. He appealed that each of the invitees should be left free to make a personal choice, rather than be described as anti-Hindu if they don't go or playing into the BJP's hands if they do attend. Most experts believe that BJP's good showing in just concluded assembly polls and the sentiments generated by Ram Temple may help it in general elections. Some other factors, like continuation of the free ration scheme, will also tilt the scale in the ruling party's favour. So clearly, the opposition parties are in for a tough fight, especially in North India. Against this backdrop, what will be the significance of the 2024 general elections? This will be, for the first time after several years, actually uh, quite a few decades, uh, since 1970 uh, uh, or so, uh, that uh, uh, you will uh, see uh, a government that was in power for two successive five-year terms will be going in for a fresh election uh, and renew its term. So, uh, if as is expected, uh, if the ruling party at present uh, renews its mandate from the people and forms a government for the third term, uh, it will be uh, a record of sorts uh, being uh, seen after several decades uh, in independent India. And in a coincidence of sorts, about 40 other countries will also go to polls to elect a government this year. It may also reshape the global order. The United States, the UK, Russia, Ukraine, Pakistan, Bangladesh are among the countries where a change in government may prompt India to reshape its strategy. So what will be the significance of these elections? One has to see that what kind of governments these elections throw up and what kind of global norms and global uh, governance norms uh, are uh, are framed by the newly elected governments uh, in these countries. Soon after the Indian general elections, the new government will have to present a complete budget for financial year 2025. So what will be the key challenges for it? One is uh, to what extent uh, the newly elected government uh, adheres uh, to the uh, com to commitment of fiscal prudence uh, because it will come uh, soon after uh, India's entry into the global bond index. And number two uh, is, uh, uh, is the, the fact that the capital expenditure program of the Indian government in the last few years uh, has been uh, financed uh, uh, very well. The question is how far and how quickly can the center enhance this, this capital expenditure program? And the third thing I would say is to what extent can the tax reform agenda can be furthered? The budget will be able to give an indication to what extent can the GST rates can be rationalized to raise the, the, the revenue neutral rate uh, above 14.5%, uh, uh, which was what was supposed to be. It will be interesting to know that to what extent the new budget can outline a new agenda for a privatization and disinvestment uh, and asset monetization so that the government can raise more resources. Clearly, the first half of this year appears more eventful for now, with temple inauguration and elections on the cards. Global economy is on a revival path and it may give a further boost to the Indian economy. This year looks less uncertain than the one that has just passed. Meanwhile, was the eighth state year 
when the Indian stock markets hit record highs on the back of solid macroeconomic fundamentals and retail interest. As we kickstart 2024, Nikita Vasisht takes a deep dive into the top events that investors should watch out for and the key levels on the indices this year. Despite a rocky start, Indian equity markets have emerged as one of the best performing markets in Asia in 2023. With a rally of up to 20%, the benchmark S&P BSE Sensex and the Nifty 50 indices outpaced the MSCI Asia Pacific Index and the MSCI Emerging Markets Index, which returned up to 9% in 2023. In the process, the BSE benchmark crossed the 72,000 mark for the first time in late December, while the NSE Frontline Index came within striking distance of 22,000. The Lal Street investors, too, turned richer by around 80.5 trillion rupees last year. Going ahead, a mix of global and domestic factors will set the tone for the markets this year, the most significant of them being the general elections of 2024. Given the state election results that we have seen, um, you know, bulk of India believes that, um, you know, they will come uh, with a decent majority. Of course, uh, the proof of the pudding will be seen uh, in May 2024. But continue to help the present government uh, both quite well and uh, will reduce the premium, uh, risk premium as far as India is concerned. Policy continuity, analysts said, will also augur well for India Inc., supporting its earnings growth. According to Bloomberg data, Nifty earnings are expected to grow at 14% in FY24 and at 16% for FY25. This compares with 11% earnings growth clocked in FY23. That apart, the first budget post-election would be the most important trigger for the markets on the domestic front. Beyond that, analysts expect global factors to drive the markets. With about 50% of the top 20 nations going for national elections, we expect that the macro debate will shift from economics to politics. Second, we expect the journey to shift from inflation to that of disinflation in 2024. What we mean is, while we saw increasing inflation in early part of 2023, we will gradually see declining inflation as we go through the year 2024. Third, we expect the growth to bottom out in 2024. That said, geopolitical developments and oil prices remain key unknowns for the markets at present. Against this backdrop, where are the Sensex and Nifty headed this year? We remain to be positive for 2024 for Nifty with a target of 24,700. However, the journey towards 24,700 will not be a linear. The Sensex Index, meanwhile, may rally all the way to 81,600 with near-term resistance at 79,800. The index's major support stays at 62,600. Thus, market mavens see India as a shining star in 2024, where any interest rate cut would provide additional boost to the market. However, they believe valuations will become an important factor in driving the outperformance. Today, on January 1, manufacturing PMI data and auto sales data for December 2023 will be on investors' radar. He's making plans for an early retirement. Business Standard Last year, we also saw Hamas fighters entering Israeli territory and killing at least 1,000 unarmed people. The Israeli response was fierce. At least 20,000 people have lost their lives in Palestine so far. The clash is also finding echo in the Red Sea, where the Iran-aligned Houthi rebels are targeting cargo ships, which they claim to have some Israeli links. Now, the US has formed a coalition to safeguard commerce in the region. Ayush Mishra has more on it. Remember the last time world trade and global shipping was briefly disrupted when the Taiwanese vessel Ever Given got stuck in the Suez Canal. 
That was 2021. This time, the Red Sea, leading to the Suez Canal, is under siege by Yemen's Houthi militants. The Iran-backed rebels are allegedly attacking commercial cargo vessels in response to the Israel-Palestine war. And the impact is deep because the Red Sea is one of the most important arteries for consumer goods, grain and energy supplies between Europe and Asia. Nearly 12% of global maritime trade passes through the Swiss Canal. To address security challenges in the Southern Red Sea and Gulf of Aden, an international coalition named Operation Prosperity Gaussian, or OPG, was recently established, including the United States, the United Kingdom, Bahrain, Canada, France, Italy, Netherlands, Norway, Seychelles, and Spain. A top spokesperson from the Pentagon describes OPG as functioning similarly to a highway patrol on the Red Sea. While announcing the establishment of Operation Prosperity Guardian, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin III mentioned the crisis as an international challenge that demands collective action. In his words, the Operation Prosperity Guardian is an important new multinational security initiative under the umbrella of the Combined Maritime Forces and the leadership of its Task Force 153, which focuses on security in the Red Sea. Of late, shipping container companies MSC, CMA, CGM Group and Haypack Lloyd, among others, are avoiding the Red Sea and sending their ships around Africa and the Cape of Good Hope. However, Maersk, one of the world's largest shipping companies, is reportedly gearing up to resume the passage of its ships through the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden. Musk said in a statement that it has received confirmation that the previously announced multinational security initiative, Operation Prosperity Guardian, has now been set up and deployed to allow maritime commerce to pass through the Red Sea Gulf of Aden. The new coalition aims to collaboratively tackle security challenges in the region with the objective of guaranteeing freedom of navigation for all nations and enhancing regional security. Trusted Bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian. Several Israeli firms, including startups, are now entering into agreements for an overland trade route which cuts through the Persian Gulf, Saudi Arabia and Jordan to reach Israel. Well, that's all for today. For more news and analysis, please log into our website, business-standard.com. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.